leadership for UNESCO. Mr. Prime Minister, your presence today here is testimony to the depth of our partnership. This is a partnership of values and a partnership for action. This is embodied in the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development, the first such institute that UNESCO opened in the Asia-Pacific region. This is embodied in the 32 sites on the World Heritage List, including the last most re recently inscribed Rani Kivav, the Queen's Stepwell at Patan, Gujarat. This is embodied in India's unique living traditions, testifying to your country's immense diversity starting with yoga, an expression of the unity of body and mind, harmony with the world, which I know is so important to you, and which the world has recognized with the declaration of the 21st June as International Yoga Day by the United Nations General Assembly upon your initiative. This is embodied in the rise of digital India, which UNESCO is committed to supporting. I wish to recognize also the important role of Dr. Karan Singh as the representative of India to the UNESCO Executive Board. UNESCO, Mr. Prime Minister, needs India's leadership more than ever today. On Indian's Independence Day, you, Mr. Prime Minister, said, we walk together, we move together, we think together, we resolve together, and together we take this country forward. This is true for India, but this stands for all societies. Inclusion is what makes society stronger, more resilient, more innovative. This means empowering young people 
to participate fully in shaping their societies through education, through training, through decent jobs. This means ensuring gender equality through the education of all girls, through respect and well-being for all women. And I know how much this means to you. This is a turning point year when governments are crafting a new global sustainable development agenda. We need to get this right. Political and economic agreements are not enough for lasting peace and development. Sustainability must build on human rights and dignity, on solidarity and dialogue, by, empower by empowering every woman and man to do everything they can. This is the message of UNESCO carried forward for 70 years. We must build on the soft power of education, the sciences, culture, communication, new technologies to nurture our greatest renewable energy, human ingenuity. India and UNESCO hold this vision in common. And I thank you once again, Mr. Prime Minister, for coming to this house. But for the nations that came together at its birth, and for three times as many that joined it later, there is one unshakable belief. Our world is and will remain a better place because of the United Nations. It is this faith that have given birth to so many of its institutions that deal with every aspect of human challenges. Our collective goal is to seek a peaceful and prosperous future for our world in which every nation has a voice, all peoples have an identity, all cultures are flowers in garden. Every human being has a life of dignity. Every child a future of opportunity. And our planet, the chance to preserve its glory. No organization serves our cause more than this one. The seeds of our collective destiny are sown in human minds. It is nurtured by the light of education and the spirit of inquiry. It makes progress through the marvels of science and it draws strength from the basic character of nature, that harmony and unity in diversity. That is why UNESCO was among the first missions of the United Nations. That is why India values the work of UNESCO so deeply and cherishes our partnership so immensely. I am conscious of the extraordinary legacy of our relationship from the times of UNESCO's birth. I recall Mahatma Gandhi's message to UNESCO calling for an urgent action to address the needs of education to secure lasting peace. And the leadership of Dr. Radha Krishna later became our president in the yearly of this institution. We are grateful for UNESCO's support for education and science in India and for preservation of our cultural heritage. Equally, we are privileged to have worked with UNESCO in support of its mission around the world. For in the challenges India faces 
and the dreams that Indians seek, our approach mirrors the ideals of UNESCO. We have built a modern state in an ancient land with timeless tradition of openness and coexistence and as a society of extraordinary diversity. The foundation of our constitution rests on a fundamental principles, the peace and the prosperity of all is indivisible for the welfare of the individual, the strength of the nation is determined by the joint hands of every citizen and real progress is measured through empowerment of the weakest. This has been our creed since we assume office nearly a year ago. And where we shall urge for our progress, not just by the cold statistics of growth, but by the warm glow of belief and hope on human faces. For me, it means many things. We will defend and protect the right and liberty of every citizen. We will ensure that every citizen of every faith, culture, and creed has an equal place in our society, belief in her future, and the confidence to pursue. Education always had a special place in our tradition. As our ancient sayings, it is vaye krute bhartati eva nityam vidya dhanam Sarva Pradhanam, the wealth that increases by giving, the wealth is knowledge and is supreme of all possessions. We have launched the most ambitious program to provide skills to our youth and education for every child in the remotest villages. Our progress will remain a mirage unless women no longer suffer from daily fear or barriers to opportunity and when they are no longer victims of exclusion and prejudice. And this change must begin with the girl child. So the program to educate and support the girl child in India is one that is closest to my heart. We will ensure that they can go to school and also that they can attend in safety and dignity. Today, the digital age has created opportunities beyond imagination, but digital divide can expand disparities. On the other hand, Digital connectivity and smartphone have created a revolution of possibilities to educate, deliver, service, and extend development. This is the most exciting change in our era. Our digital India will create a participative, transparent, and a responsive government connected to the citizens. And we have launched a digital literacy mission to connect each of our 600,000 villages. The link between habit and fulfillment of human potential is deep and strong. So the highest priority for my government is to provide a roof over every head, power in every house, sanitation and clean water within everyone's reach, a hope for every child to survive and a chance to every new mother to love her child. It also means clean rivers, air that we can breathe and forests filled with the sound of birds. To achieve these goals, we need not just policies and resources, 
but even more the power of science. For us, science is driven by the larger purpose of human development and for a safe, sustainable, prosperous future for India. Science also unites people across borders in shared purpose. And when we share the, its fruits with those who do not have it, we connect lives and make our world a better place. India never forgets the help we have received in our early year. Today, we are fulfilling our responsibility to others. Therefore, science is a key priority of India's international engagement. Culture is a sublime expression of people and the foundation of a society. UNESCO's initiatives to preserve the world's cultural heritage, including in India, are inspiring. We see India's rich and diverse cultural heritage as humanity's wealth. And we will do everything to preserve it for future generations. We have launched Heritage Development and Augmentation Yojana Ridai or Heart in Hindi to preserve the cultural heritage of our cities. We have started a special scheme called Prasad are offering pilgrimage, rejuvenation, and spirituality augmentation drive for rejuvenation of our pilgrimage centers. Madam Chairman, I speak of our vision and initiatives because in our own aspirations and efforts, we see the value of UNESCO to our world with great clarity. In the challenges, of our times, we see its purpose with a sense of urgency. The fault lines in our world are shifting from the boundaries of nations into the web of our societies and the streets of our cities. The threats are changing from domination by states to destruction by groups. We fight today not only ever what we claim, but also for who we are. And in many parts of the world, culture remains a source of a conflict. We have access to communication at the click of a mouse. We live in a world of in information, yet we know that familiarity does not always lead to fraternity or reduce prejudice. When Ebola threatens an entire region, the fury of unseasonal storms destroys crops and lives and disease, still defeat our most courageous fight. We understand how fragile we are. When we see people living at the age of existence, children shut out of classrooms and nations without the human resources to shoulder the responsibility of progress. We know that we still have to long way to go. To be sure, our world has made incredible progress over seven decades. So our progress should inspire us to meet our challenges. UNESCO can play a vital role in addressing them. Culture must connect, not divide our world. It should be a bridge to greater respect and understanding between people. It should join nations in peace and harmony. Across India's neighborhood, Asia and Indian Ocean, we are retracing our cultural connections to form a closer bond of friendship in this dynamic region. We must turn deep into our cultures, traditions, and religions to overcome 
the rising tide of extremism, violence, and divisions across the world. We must intensify exchanges between the youth of the world to show the seeds of a more peaceful world. Cultures also hold great wealth of traditional knowledge. Societies across the world have evolved them to wisdom gathered over the ages, and they hold the secret to economic, FEC, and environment-friendly solution to many of our problems. But today, they are at risk of existence in our globalized world. So we must here make more effort to revive, preserve, and nurture traditional knowledge. This is all already found a fundamental truth about human civilization as our cultures are diverse, knowledge has many sources. In doing so, we will give ourselves a greater chance to meet our challenges. We must do more to harness science for human welfare in some of the most vulnerable parts of the world, especially for health and food security. Climate change is a pressing global challenge, and it calls for a collective human action and a comprehensive response. We must draw upon our entire wealth of wisdom, the strength of every institution, all possibilities of innovation, and the power of science. In India, faith and nature have had a deep link since ancient times. For us, the only path of prosperity is the sustainable one. We make this choice with the natural instincts of our culture and tradition. But we also do this with a commitment to our future. We have, for example, set a target of adding 175,000 megawatt, gigawatt of megawatt of clean renewable energy in the next seven years. Too often, our discussion is reduced to an argument about emission cuts. But we are more likely to succeed if we offer affordable solution, not simply imposes choices. That is why I have called for global public action to develop clean energy that is affordable and accessible to all. And it is for the same reason that I call for a change in lifestyle. Because the emission reduction that we seek will be the natural outcome of how we live, and it will also mean a different path to economic well-being. It is with this vision that I had called the United Nations General Assembly last September to declare June 21st as the International Day of Yoga. <laughs> yoga awakens. Yoga awakens a sense of oneness and harmony with self, society, and nature. By changing our lifestyle and creating consciousness, it can help us deal with climate change and create a more balanced world. Last December, the UNGA adopted it with a record co-sponsorship in a record time. It was not just an act of friendship for India. It reflected our collective ability to go beyond our familiar boundaries in search for solutions to common challenges. We campaigned to clean our Ganges River is a mission that connects culture, science, traditional knowledge, education, economy, and environment 
but it is also about attitude and lifestyles. Madam Chairperson, outside this hall, I paid respect at the statue of a great Indian philosopher and sage, Sri Aurobindo. There is much that we can learn from his human and spiritualism. From his belief in the unity of individual consciousness with the world outside, the enlightened purpose of education, the service of science, and the unity of the world founded on national freedom diversity of civilizations and autonomy of culture. It is a guiding spirit for the purpose of this institution, the defense of peace and the mind of man. The 70th anniversary is a moment to celebrate our remarkable journey so far. It is also a time to look ahead with wisdom that has come with time and experience. Whatever we wish to achieve as United Nations, UNESCO will always have a part to pay, play, whether it is sustainable development or post-2015 agenda, climate change, or peace and security. UNESCO's responsibilities to our future have become bigger, and so our resolve must be stronger. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As the Prime Minister mentioned, the United Nations General Assembly adopted uh, only a few months ago a resolution establishing the International Day of Yoga to be observed on 21 June each year. To support the cause of the International Day of Yoga, the uh, Indian company Tech Mahindra has developed a website demonstrating their commitment to this initiative, which is uh, targeted to support world unity. I now have the honor to request His Excellency the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to launch this portal, accompanied by the Director General, and this will mark the official launch of the website. I would also like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Gurnani to join us on stage, please. Website is now officially launched. Mr. Prime Minister, Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank His Excellency for his speech, thank him for sharing with us his vision of building a modern state on an ancient land, in his own words. I would like to reassure you, Mr. Prime Minister, that this vision, your words, resonate deeply with us, with UNESCO. Because this is the vision about the power of education, of the sciences, of the new technologies, who will enlighten the world and move forward the development. Your vision of cultures, of a culture that unite, it does not divide, resonates deeply with us. Allow me to say once again how honored we are to have you here at UNESCO 
to thank you for your support and recognition of the role of this organization that has played during the 70th years of its existence and to assure you that this is a responsibility that we will take forward because the world needs us. The world needs peace and sustainable development. And your words are deeply encouraging us. Thank you once again, and I wish you success. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, kindly remain in your seat before uh, leaving. His Excellency the Prime Minister wishes to greet a few people among the public. And uh, this will be an opportunity for all of us to hear again the UNESCO choir who will uh, perform this time a piece by Mozart. And I would like to warmly thank the choir for their performance. <laughs>